Good evening. Appreciate everyone joining us tonight. My name is Robert Parisi. I'm the mayor of West Orange. I'm here tonight with the emergency management staff as well as our health professionals. We are here in the office of emergency management here at Firehouse 5. Here tonight to talk about uh, this very uh, unique and very uh, significant issue facing our country right now and what our approach is uh, in addressing this and doing all we can uh, to work together with state, county, uh, and other local officials to keep our residents informed and, and obviously safe. I'm going to hear a little bit tonight from our other uh, professionals and then we'll have an opportunity uh, for residents to uh, ask questions and we'll hopefully uh, answer all the questions uh, we can. Uh, we'll stay here as long as uh, we think we have to. Uh, and hopefully to address all of your concerns. So I do want to start tonight uh, by introducing uh, the other members of uh, the emergency management team and task force and of course our local health professionals uh, to talk a little bit about what they're doing in their area of expertise uh, and then um, we'll open it up to questions. So we're going to start tonight with our, our senior health officer, uh, Teresa Donova. Good evening. Uh, the West Orange Health Department, consisting of myself, the health officer, nursing, the chief and registered environmental health specialist, the registrar and deputy registrar, senior citizen transportation, and animal control. We've been in regular contact with our partners at the New Jersey Department of Health, our colleagues in other Essex County municipalities, and our designated New Jersey Lynx Agency, and of course, our OEM members. The health department staff members attend appropriate and ongoing meetings and conference calls with the New Jersey Department of Health and local partners, along with the weekly governor's news briefs, which last approximately 15 minutes to an hour. Attending these briefs are the commissioner of health, the assistant commissioner, state epidemiologist and other OEM members. The health department has created email groups for public and private schools, preschools and daycare centers, 11 long-term care facilities, four senior houses, and the West Orange food establishments. We also have a contact list for homebound residents and help to maintain New Jersey Register Ready a registry of residents that may need help in times of emergency. Guidance documents are emailed from the health department that are produced by the CDC and the New Jersey Department of Health for each category mentioned. The health officer and nursing division are notified 24-7 for new or confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the township. The nurses perform the, the initial and follow-up investigations till the case's conclusion. Our goal, of course, is to prevent the spread of the virus and protect the residents to the best of our ability. The registered environmental health specialists are making inspections in food establishments, gyms, and other recreational facilities to ensure COVID-19 restrictions are in place and being enforced. We follow the guidelines set forth by the state and the CDC. We are also working closely with the superintendent of schools and school nurses by following established guidelines, helping to develop protocols, decision making, and answering questions. The health department is a member of the Office of Emergency Management team and communicates throughout the day in updates and relevant issues. The health department provides guidance documents that are placed on westorange.org and social media for residents and businesses to access. Please use the mail, online functions, email, the exterior drop box, and telephone if possible to limit contact in municipal buildings. The health department number is 973-325 4120. Um, we are here to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Teresa. Teresa has been the health officer 
uh, in town for a lot of years, and she's been a tremendous asset as we navigate through this uh, most recent crisis. Uh, you can't talk about emergency uh, situations without, of course, talking about our emergency personnel uh, on a daily basis, uh, both our police and fire. And we want to hear tonight from uh, both the chiefs of those departments. And we'll start first with uh, uh, the chief of the police department, James Abbott. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, this crisis, like every other crisis Americans have faced, uh, is something that I'm confident we'll get by and uh, we'll survive and we'll, we'll do well and we'll thrive. But uh, unfortunately, all crises tend to bring out both the best and the worst in everyone. And uh, it's, it's the, uh, the worst that I'm really here to address tonight. I want people to be very aware that people are scanning and we have to... Be very vigilant in your how you take your phone calls and answer your internet emails. It's come to our attention that some people may be using this as an opportunity to fraud or take advantage of the most vulnerable targets and the elderly. Please be advised that no West Orange Police Department personnel will be making spot checks of our residents or arriving at households to do quarantine checks. If a person arrives at your door and attempts to ask questions or request entry into your home, please do not hesitate to call 911 immediately. Be reminded that West Orange police officers will be in uniform if they have to come to your home for any reason. And if anybody is in plain clothes, they will have identification and you should still dial 911 to ensure that they are, in fact, West Orange police officers. Do not take their word for it or let them tell you that they will have somebody phone you. Historically, we've always assisted the community by performing welfare checks of a vulnerable family member, neighbor, or an at-risk person. But as I stated, this would be a uniformed officer acting upon request of a concerned citizen only. Any questions of a person's validity, residents should immediately dial 911, as I said earlier. Right now, the biggest scams we know of, uh, as per the FTC, are products online that claim to treat or prevent the coronavirus. As we know, there is no evidence to back any of these claims right now. Scammers are also using this opportunity to commit phishing emails by approaching people posing as a health official or health care provider, such as the CDC, World Health Organization, etc. Here's some tips to help you from sources you don't know. They could download viruses onto your computer or device. Watch for emails claiming to be from the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, and for experts saying that they have information about the virus. For the most up-to-date information about the coronavirus, Visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the World Health Organization. Ignore online offers for vaccinations. There currently are no vaccines, pills, potions, lotions, lozenges, or any other prescription or over-the-counter products available to treat or cure coronavirus disease. Do your homework. When it comes to donations, whether through charities or crowdfunding sites, don't let anyone rush you into making a donation. If someone wants donations in cash, by gift card, or by wiring money, do not do it. Price gouging. I have a conference call each morning with the New Jersey State Chiefs Association and the Attorney General of New Jersey, Gerber Graywall. I can let Gerber Graywall know if anyone knows of any price gouging going on every morning. This long practice maneuver is illegal in all states. Any reports should be forwarded to the Better Business Bureau or, as I said, you can bring this directly to my attention. All of our community service units, programs, for the seniors are currently suspended, as are our juvenile programs. We've suspended all town ordinance parking, such as overnight and alternate side and metered <coughs> parking, to help accommodate people that you need to come in and help you with your day-to-day -day activities, childcare, etc. Non-investigative reports, non-emergency, non-violence will all be taken over the phone. Any of those reports you should need a copy of for any purpose, you can get email or fax to you, or we can have it hand delivered and left in your mailbox. Uh, we're waiving all fees for that at this time. Again, anything that you need, either dial 911 in the case of an emergency or 325-4000 for non-emergency. Thank you. Stay healthy. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. As the Chief mentioned, not only today, not only in this crisis, but if any resident ever has any concerns, uh, has any uh, Concerns about what's happening in their neighborhood, happening in the town, should always feel comfortable to call 325-4000, the police desk, 
they're there 24 hours a day, every day, uh, to address any concerns residents have and to answer questions. So uh, I'll now introduce our fire chief, Chief Anthony Vecchio. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, West Orange. My name is Tony Vecchio, and I'm the chief of the West Orange Fire Department. I'm going to leave the overall conversation about this crisis to the mayor and my other colleagues who you'll hear from here tonight and keep my remarks specific to the fire and EMS operations. As many of you know, the West Orange Fire Department is responsible for fire suppression, rescue, hazmat, and emergency medical services for the township. We provide these services around the clock and prepare and train regularly to address most any potential scenario that may involve our agency. While the COVID-19 scenario is certainly a larger scale than some other communicable disease scenarios, we take somewhat the same preventative approach as we would with influenza or any other viral diseases. We've not currently changed our staffing levels. However, we have adjusted our response guidelines to address the prophylaxis necessary to keep our personnel healthy and able to continue serving our residents during this time of heightened community concern. In addition to our standard operating procedures related to communicable diseases, we have issued additional directives to our personnel, specific to the current response environment. Screening potential patients begins with communications operators at our dispatch center and continues with our first responders once they arrive on scene of a call for service. This patient screening allows our personnel to know if and when to don appropriate protective equipment. As of this date, the fire department has experienced no measurable increase in fire or EMS call volume. A relatively low number of medical transports involving symptomatic patients have been recorded, and to our knowledge, we have not transported any confer confirmed COVID-19 patients to date. I'd like to offer the community some simple recommendations as it pertains to the current COVID-19 event. While at this stage, most people have been overwhelmed with information on the virus, we recommend following the information distributed only by the Center for Disease Control and the New Jersey Department of Health. Also, if you or anyone in your family or circle believes they are symptomatic as defined by the CDC, we ask that they contact their personal physicians first for direction. If they do wish to be seen at a hospital, we ask that only patients who are non-ambulatory and without a means of transport, call 911 for service. Of course, if you do decide to go to the hospital on your own, we do ask that you call the hospital first and advise them of your symptoms so they're prepared as well. The overall goal here is to limit the exposure of the virus to others, and that includes essential emergency responders. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you, Chief. We are, uh, we are blessed with the emergency personnel we have here in town by both, from both our police uh, and fire. I'm grateful uh, for all they are doing uh, at this particular time of crisis. So thank you to both Chief Abbott, Chief Vecchio, uh, and our police and fire departments. Uh, in the best of times, our senior citizen population is among the most vulnerable. Uh, that is only heightened and worsened in the circumstances we find ourselves uh, in now. So we are uh, doing all we can to communicate with our senior citizen population and to provide whatever resources we can for them. And that starts with our senior citizen coordinator. So I'd like to introduce Laura Van Dyke. Great. Thank you, Mayor Parisi. And uh, thank you for your leadership during this time. I'm glad to be here today to talk a little bit about some of the steps we've taken so far to reach our seniors. And we have an active email list as well as an active mailing list uh, for which we uh, were able to send out our letter and resources informing our seniors that uh, as of last week that our recreational activities and our St. Patrick's Day party have been canceled and uh, we will be communicating uh, as things um, improve and sharing when things resume again. So in our email and in our mailing, we uh, sent out resources uh, about uh, grocery stores and pharmacies that deliver. Obviously at this point, it's hard to uh, access some of those uh, resources, but we do, I do particularly wanna mention that um, we have a resource in town through the 
uh, Holy Trinity Food Pantry. Cynthia Cumming has been a very tremendous resource. And for any of our older adults, as well as uh, folks with an underlying health condition, we have the opportunity to, uh, the availability to deliver a bag of uh, items from the food pantry to a resident's home. So you can call the Department of Senior Services, 973-325-4105, and we'll take that referral and we'll get the information over to Cynthia. Um, and I would like to mention that she is in need of some items, so I also want to thank many of the residents who've reached out to offer their volunteer um, services. So Cynthia is in need of items um, that, I, that will be um, also indicated on our website, but peanut butter and jelly, ramen, soup, canned fruit, uh, spaghetti sauce and pasta are items that are needed. And you could reach um, Cynthia Cumming and uh, you could contact me for her number at 973-325-4105. And uh, lastly, I would just like to mention, um, during this time, it can be very anxiety provoking for people, it's natural. The Mental Health Association of Essex County has uh, activated their um, hotline for counseling, so you can actually call and receive some support by phone. And that phone number is 877-294-4357. And again, these resources are available on our website. You can also call for the information. And we've been fielding a number of phone calls from residents, from their family members. We're happy to be a resource in whatever way we can. And um, we uh, look forward to being here to serve you. Thank you, Mayor Preci. Thank you, Laura. One of the residents just, uh, just posted that we should not be in the same room uh, under these circumstances, but uh, though you can't see us, we are doing all we can uh, to practice responsible social distancing. We are actually not in the same room. We are rotating in and out of the room one at a time uh, as each of us speaks. So we're doing the best we can uh, to be respectful of what the CDC guidelines are. Township of West Orange has an Office of Emergency Management, not just for crises like these uh, current circumstances and a worldwide pandemic, we use the office of OE, OEM for snowstorms, for uh, bad hurricanes, uh, any type of emergencies that might pop up during the year. Uh, it has been in place for many years, and we are fortunate recently to bring on a new OEM coordinator, uh, and he has uh, been thrown into the fire, but uh, Nikki and his committee has done a great job uh, in navigating uh, all the information and all the um, issues that we are addressing as this continues to unfold. So uh, we're grateful to have Nikki and I introduce our OEM coordinator, Nick Albino. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, West Orange, families, friends, fellow residents. At 8 p.m. this evening, the Office of Emergency Management, along with the Mayor's Office, have declared a public health emergency within the township. The West Orange Office of Emergency Management we the lead agency, lead agency coordinating the township's response and mitigations, mitigation efforts in response to the COVID-19 virus. We will bring together the public safety and administrative departments in the township to ensure that cohesive multi-level mitigation plans are undertaken in an effort to flatten the curve. The public health emergency declaration gives the emergency management coordinator mm -hmm. water powers to mandate certain curfews and oppose additional business restrictions as needed. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Nikki. So as Nikki mentioned, we have declared a state of emergency following um, the state and previously to that the federal government. It provides us a lot of opportunity and flexibility uh, in addressing uh, these many issues. Um, this process is, is very fluid. Um, this is not something that we are familiar with as a community. There's been no uh, textbook on how to address something like this. This is not a West Orange problem. This is something impacting the whole world. And we're admittedly learning a little bit as we go. We're taking the best guidance we can from the CDC, uh, from state and county officials, from other local municipalities, counting on our professionals uh, to navigate us through this. So, 
some of what we've established today. Uh, some might say that we should have done three days ago, but the information that we had three or four days ago, we made the decisions that we thought were the best possible at that time. So this process is continuing uh, to unfold, and we've been doing all we can to continue always with the goal of providing of providing our residents with the best of information and every opportunity to keep them safe. So just as a summary of a few we interact with what the state has declared today and talking with the county today. So just as a reminder, all town coordinated events and programs have been canceled. Town hall is still open. Some neighboring towns have decided to close town hall and it's very possible that we might in the near future. Uh, but right now we are keeping town hall open. We are encouraging residents to count on services through the website, uh, mail in information if you can. There is a, a drop box outside of Town Hall. If you decide you want to drop something off, you can drop it at the drop box 24 hours a day so you don't have to go in. If you think you might have to go in, it might be a good idea uh, to call first and see if you can get the help you need over the phone. Uh, but for the time being, we are keeping a Town Hall open. We are doing what we have to do to keep Town Hall clean and sanitized, and we're doing that regularly several times a day. Uh, but uh, for, the, for the time being, we are keeping that open, but we will recognize that in the near future, we might, we might close Town Hall for an extended period of time. All recreation-related events, even from private organizations or clubs, are shut down until further notice. There's no use of our fields. We are closing all kiddie parks and playgrounds, and where possible, uh, there'll be signs at the kiddie parks, and some parks even have the ability to be locked. We'll be locking them. We are not closing our parks. Uh, we recognize that the idea is to stay home and stay away from other people, but we do recognize that maybe someone wants to take a walk to a park and walk around the pond or uh, just get a little fresh air. So we are keeping our parks open, and we'll hope that people will recognize the recommendations and not congregate in, with more than uh, too many people. The county has closed their parks and facilities as of today. Uh, the Toby Katz Community Center at, uh, at Dagnan Park, that's been closed. All events have been canceled for the foreseeable future. Council meetings have been canceled as well. Uh, there was some uh, discussion today in the state about how to address possibly having meetings electronically uh, that won't violate uh, the, the current public open, the open Public Meetings Act. Uh, it'll be on a temporary basis, but we're still sorting through that, and, and I'm sure uh, the council, once they discuss it among themselves, will provide information as to how the council meetings and ultimately conducting the public's business uh, will move forward. But right now, the next meeting is canceled. The library has been closed, at least till March 29th, and possibly longer. Municipal court has been closed, at least for the next couple weeks, though we suspect that the municipal court will ultimately be shut down uh, longer than that. We are continuing to operate the Jitney. Right now, we're taking the position that as long as New Jersey Transit is operating, that there are still residents who might need to still get to work. We're going to provide the Jitney access uh, for as long as we think we can. Again, that's a decision that might change uh, in a few days. The buses, uh, which also serve as the senior citizen transportation buses, they're being cleaned and sanitized on a regular basis. Jitney ridership was significantly reduced today. So clearly, we understand that a lot of people are not going to work, but there are still some people who are counting on that. And as long as New Jersey Transit is operating, uh, we're going to continue to operate the, the Jitney buses. The Recycling Center will remain open. Not always a need to see a lot of people there. Some people like to pick up and drop off recyclables, drop off some lawn debris. That's still going to be open. And of course, garbage and recycling service uh, will continue uh, for the time being as well. All as part of the state mandate today, all daycare and child care centers are being uh, shut down. The state did impose an 8, 8, 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew uh, beginning tonight, closing uh, restaurants, bars um, as of 8 o'clock tonight. They can only be open for delivery or takeout only. Gym and fitness centers, movie theaters, all uh, we have them here in town. They're all, they're all shut down as part of the new state mandate. All non-essential businesses can continue to operate but, but must close at 8 p.m., again, recognizing the curfew of 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. So some examples of essential businesses, you know, we say non-essential businesses. The essential businesses would be grocery stores, pharmacies, medical supply stores, gas stations, healthcare facilities, anything related even tangentially uh, to the healthcare business is considered an example of essential business. The county is working uh, on setting up mobile testing centers in the near future. There's not a lot of information 
about that available yet, but they, uh, they're working on that. And as soon as we get additional information, we'll continue uh, to provide that. So again, a lot of things happened in the last three or four days. I suspect a lot will continue to happen over the next couple of days. We'll do everything we can to continue uh, to provide information to the residents. We ask you all to continue to check our Facebook page, continue to check uh, the website. We are uh, posting what is the most recent and update information from the CDC themselves and making it uh, available uh, to all residents. Again, some of the, uh, forget all this other stuff that's happening, some of the directions are real simple. Stay home, stay in small groups, do everything you can to avoid contact with as many people as possible, and hopefully, uh, collectively, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get through this. So uh, that's where we're at now. A lot of people uh, have posted questions. We're gonna try to uh, answer as many as we can. A few people had posted earlier, and I'd like to ask the uh, police chief uh, if he could. There was a question that was posted earlier about how 911 calls uh, would be prioritized. There is an entire system of, of, of addressing the 911 calls, and Chief Abbott will, uh, will address that. As I said, he's, he's far away, so he's, he's working his way over here. Chief, could you just talk a little bit about how 911 calls are prioritized, uh, whether it's in a particular crisis like this or just even on a normal day? Sure, man. Anybody who doesn't believe we're in different rooms, that should prove it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, any 911 call or even a call on 325-4000 for that matter is entered into a, uh, what we call a CAD RMS, a computer-aided dispatch record management system. That system automatically prioritizes calls based upon the, um, it's given a weight. So obviously if somebody called on a parking complaint and that was entered in the queue and it's waiting at dispatch and a crime of violence comes in, that's going to go right in front of that crime automatically. It doesn't take a decision to do it. The system does it automatically and the next available car is either sent or somebody's pulled off an existing job and is sent on that job. Um, if there's, uh, there's anything else, I'm sure you can uh, send in a question. I'm here. Mayor will call me back in, and uh, I'll be happy to come in and answer any further questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. So again, there's been a lot of questions. We're gonna to try to answer as many as we can. Uh, stay here for a little while. Uh, are the reservations closed to hikers? Um, they're county parkland, and um, it's my understanding that the county did close reservations to hikers. The township has decided not to close parks. We recognize that some people might wanna get out uh, a little bit, but uh, the county did close all their land as of today. Some people are talking about you know simple things to do. I mentioned earlier avoiding contact, washing hands regularly. Uh, the uh, how are we coordinating with other towns? That's a great question. So uh, today the county executive hosted a conference call with all the mayors from the 22 towns in Essex County. Uh, we took that call at town hall with the entire OEM team uh, to hear what some other towns are doing. Our health officer. Uh, Teresa is uh, talking with other towns on a regular basis, as is Chief Abbott and Chief Vecchio. Uh, even, on a, even on a different kind of circumstance, our chiefs are, are talking with other chiefs all the time as well. So um, again, I, this is not a town of West Orange problem. This is a national problem. So we're relying on information uh, from other towns, from the county, from the state, and, and always talking to other towns about what some of them are doing to address some of these issues. Um, we do have two confirmed cases uh, in West Orange right now. I think Teresa talked a little bit about the protocol for that, but we are addressing that. I don't know if that's something Sue might want to talk a little bit about. So she didn't speak earlier, but, but Sue Iovino, who's been a tremendous help in this whole process, she's a, a, a senior public health nurse, has been with the township for a long, long time, and uh, she's been a tremendous asset. So she can talk a little bit about, now that we know of two confirmed cases, uh, what happens from there. Good evening, thank you, Mayor. 
when we have a confirmed case, we get in, we get the information from the hospitals through our CDRS system, which is a communicable system which we have logged from the state health department. With that information, we're able to see who's been tested and whether or not their tests have come back positive. Once we receive a positive test on a, an individual, we are then able to begin our contact tracing and I spend time interviewing a phone interview with the individual and I find out where they have been during what we refer to in epidemiology as the period of interest. And that period of interest for COVID-19 happens to be three days before they begin symptoms, followed by up into where we are and throughout the, conclude, throughout the conclusion of their illness. During that period of time, we find out where they've been, who they've seen, how they've gotten themselves to and from work, how they've gotten themselves to and from the hospital, people they may have interacted with, their household contacts, and from that we are able to determine who may or may not need to be contacted and told they are con close contact of a case. Close household contacts may or may not require testing depending upon the interaction, but we are not recommending all individuals be tested. Individuals with mild symptoms should stay home if they are sick. It's our goal to best protect the confidentiality of the individuals. I know a lot of people have called and want to know who the individual is, where they live. Um, other information is through HIPAA and it is our responsibility to protect the individual's privacy and we will give information out and we will give information out as necessary. If anyone has any concerns, I'm available Monday through Friday and off hours with this situation. My number in the office is 973-325-4131. I would just like to bring to your attention, we do have a number that the state has put onto release for specific information regarding COVID. Number is 1-800-222-1222. If that number is familiar to anyone, that is the number for the Poison Control Center. We're currently using that on the state level to coordinate our efforts as well with COVID-19. Again, that number is 1-800-222-1222. Please feel free to contact me in the office if you have any questions. We are always available. Again, the most important thing is to stay home, practice social distancing, and if you feel you've been exposed to a case, please contact your primary health care provider, and he or she will be able to direct you to the proper channels. Thank you, and have a good evening. Great. Thank you, Sue. So a few people have posted about the garbage. Forgive me, I thought I mentioned it earlier, but garbage and recycling service is going to continue as normal for the foreseeable future. Again, if that were to change, uh, we'll let everyone know. Uh, Councilwoman Matu Brown messaged about the budget. That's a good point because the, we are in the budget time of year uh, for the municipality, local government in New Jersey. Uh, among the discussions that took place today at the state legislature, is the state allowed to push those deadlines back? So the budget hearings that were scheduled for this coming Saturday have been postponed. No new date has been set yet. Uh, they have uh, pushed back all the deadlines for the budgeting process. Not that that's not an important part of what we do, but it certainly uh, is secondary to what's happening now. So that'll uh, be put off uh, for a while as well. Someone mentioned about some of the offices, nail salons, uh, hair stylists, they're all still allowed uh, to operate under the current uh, rules. Uh, they can't operate past 8 p.m., uh, but they are remaining open. Again, some businesses might have decided to close on their own, but that has not been mandated uh, at this point. There's been a lot of talk. I've seen a lot of discussion on Facebook, and a lot of people even reached out to us about trying to arrange where supermarkets might set aside time for the senior population that has not happened yet in West Orange. I did see uh, earlier today that some towns uh, and some businesses have set that up yet. That has not happened yet here. If uh, the local supermarket or certainly I guess Whole Foods is, uh, is available to residents as well, if they in fact create something, uh, we'll communicate that uh, as soon as we might confirm that.
asking about an extension to the sewer bill. Uh, as of right now, we are not extending that. That can be paid online, it can be mailed in. Again, if you uh, don't wanna mail it in, if it's easier for you to drop it off, we have the drop box at Town Hall that's open 24 hours a day. You don't even have to go in the building, it's right outside uh, in the back parking lot. So if we in fact decide to extend deadlines for sewer payments or tax payments, uh, we'll advertise that uh, as, uh, as quickly as we can. There's uh, another message about playgrounds. Playgrounds are closed. I thought I mentioned that. Kitty parks are closed. We're going to post signs about that and lock them where we can. But again, parks are going to remain open. Yes, parks will remain open to walk and exercise. Um, actually, that's a good question, and maybe this Sue can answer this. And maybe Sue, forgive me if you. Sue, someone's mentioning about symptoms. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that if you didn't already. Sure. Be great. When we're looking at symptoms for COVID-19, we're looking at fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Shortness of breath being having very much difficulty with your respiratory system, you're suppressed, you're unable to, you're unable to really catch your breath without much activity, and we want to make sure that if you do exhibit those symptoms, that you seek medical attention right away. Again, if you call your medical provider prior to going to a hospital or first, first care or one of the other um, freestanding medical clinics, please be sure you mention your symptomatology and especially if you've been or you feel you've been exposed to a COVID-19 case. That's what we need to really look for in, in, our, in our key things of monitoring for COVID and your symptoms. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. There are a lot of questions being posted about the two victims. Unfortunately, as Sue mentioned, that's not information that's going to be released. The uh, necessary and proper organizations uh, and agencies are tracking that. And, and developing a, a timeline as to how it was they might have come into contact people and they'll be uh, addressed directly. So unfortunately, that's not information we're gonna release. Some even asked if we can tell them uh, where they live, but that's not information that's, that's gonna be released uh, in res with respect uh, to their privacy and, and more importantly, under the rules of HIPAA protection. She talked about some of the symptoms Grocery stores are allowed, uh, they are considered of the essential services, so they do not have to close uh, at 8 p.m. and re un under the new curfew that's been imposed by the state. Of course, store owners always might exercise their own caution, uh, but they are not mandated to. And I think given everyone's concern and need uh, for groceries at this time, I don't suspect that they would be. Religious services, so that um, most, if I'm not, I don't want to say definitively that all of them, but I'm pretty sure most of the uh, religious organizations in town have already canceled services. Some of that came from uh, higher up than just local, uh, but I'm pretty sure that all of the religious services from all the various faiths in town uh, have been canceled. If you are unsure about yours specifically, I would just reach out uh, directly, but it's, it's my understanding that they've all uh, been postponed or canceled at least for the time being. Uh, and again, no one really knows how long these cancellations are going to be. We're, we're uh, right now just telling people that we're canceling things uh, until further notice, and I would suspect that uh, most are going to fall under those categories. None of us really know for sure how long it will take for this to play out and how much longer we might be dealing with some of these uh, closures. Can't say for sure about schools being closed after spring break. That's uh, you know, I don't think anyone knows for sure exactly what will happen with the schools other than that they've been closed, and at least that will be the case for the time being. Uh, someone mentioned the school uh, Facebook page. Again, just like if you're looking for the town, you check out the town's website or the town's Facebook page. And the school, I know, has been great about communicating uh, as well. Our new superintendent, Dr. Cascone, has uh, been doing a lot of communication. So I would suspect if you... Uh, are counting on information and updates, the most recent of updates, you can continue uh, to count on those sources.
Good question about LabCorp and Quest in terms of testing, but I don't think they're testing at all. I don't know, to Sue. I know it's been all over the news. Uh, there's just a, a, not a lot of test kits available, but Sue, so you want to talk? They're beginning to start. They're get beginning now. Quest and LabCorp are beginning to start now. Great, thank you. So uh, someone asked about LabCorp and Quest beginning testing. They're, they're beginning to do that now. Uh, again, uh, if you feel you have the symptoms, you should start with your primary physician. How do we know when shop rights restocked? Uh, there's been almost daily updates on Facebook, so I, I don't think you have to look for long to know uh, if they're restocked. Uh, but to their credit, they've been restocking pretty quickly given, uh, given what they've been up against. Yes, you can shop after 8 p.m. There's not a designated site for tests. I mentioned earlier that the county is trying to set up mobile testing sites. They're hoping to set up two within the county. Uh, I'm sure every county in the state is trying to as well, so I don't know how quickly that might happen, but if, if in fact they do get that set up, we will uh, let everyone know. Someone mentioned the golf course. We are keeping the golf course open as of right now. Uh, the state is even keeping a lot of its recreational type of centers open. So the county chose not to, uh, but we've decided that along with keeping our parks open in case people wanna get out with a friend and get some fresh air, that we'll continue to allow the golf course to operate too. That again, that might change uh, in the coming days. We, we expect each day there to be new information and uh, a reevaluation of all the decisions we've made probably for the foreseeable future. Uh, someone's asking about the billing of the testing. That's a good question. I'm not sure I know the answer to that, though. It's my understanding that nearly all the health insurance carriers uh, in the state uh, are waiving the fees for the testing. So uh, I don't know that members are going to be billed uh, for the testing. seeing a lot of new questions. I'm not sure if everyone here in the other room is seeing anything they want to address before we, uh, we close it out. So again, there's been a lot of interest in helping people with distribution of food. I think um, Laura gave the phone number earlier if you want to call Laura directly for that. But there is an, a concerted effort to get food together for people who need it. It's getting through the Holy Trinity Food Pantry. Uh, but if you want to call Laura, uh, if you have and want to help with that, I should be happy to put you in touch with them and get that coordinated. Thank you, Joe. What happens if someone is caught outside eight to five? You know, truth is that's a, that's a good, it's a good question. But, but look, we're, we're all adults here. Uh, our police have enough to do on a good day. I don't know that we're gonna be out canvassing, looking for people to be out past eight o'clock. Uh, we're hoping that people recognize what's been recommended by the people who know best. Uh, don't go out. Don't go, stay home. Don't go near other people. Stay only with your family. If you have to go to work, uh, then make that decision that you think is best for yourself and your family. But um, right now, there's a curfew to stay out, uh, stay home uh, after 8 p.m. before 5 a.m. So uh, obviously, if our police officers come across somebody, we're going to tell you to go home, but we're hoping all of us are going to be responsible in working together uh, to get through this crisis. Current hospital capacity, that's, that's a great question, but the, as far as we know, uh, Barnabas is still okay. I know they are being overwhelmed with people in the ER uh, with concerns of symptoms, which is why Chief Vecchio uh, recommended that you call first so you let them know you're coming. Uh, we also are meeting uh, with Barnabas, uh, the Barnabas team on Wednesday and we'll get more information about how they're addressing this and how they continue uh, to plan to address this. Uh, so we'll uh, let the public know what we might learn from that meeting on Wednesday. Mm -hmm.
hours people are supposed to stay home and businesses are supposed to close from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. We just we're hoping that people are going to honor that and just stay home. Daycare centers, so they are they are closed under the new guidelines today by the state. They're they're being closed. I think the deadline uh, officially for them to uh, to stay open is is only as as of Wednesday. They're going to be closed as of Wednesday. Uh, again, for the time being, we don't know how long these closures are going to be. As I mentioned, playgrounds are closed, but parks are going to stay open. Not really seeing anything more here. I don't know if anybody on the team has any more questions. Uh, anyone out there have any know of any more questions? I think I got them all. If you uh, had a question that was not uh, actually, here's one about the parking ordinance. But the chief did overnight parking has been waived for the time being. We recognize that people might be trying to help family members, uh, so that's been waived uh, for the time being. So uh, again. We're making the decisions the best we can based on the information that's available. This is, has been a bit of a new experience. This is not something that happens routinely. Uh, we have great professionals in our town. We're blessed to have great professionals in our town, and we're working closely with the professionals uh, from the county, from the state, from the CDC, from other municipalities. There's a lot of people uh, working around the clock to inform the residents, to keep the residents safe, and, and of course we we thank the residents for their patience and for understanding as we work through these changes. Everyone's going to be inconvenienced. There's, there's no way around that. But uh, uh, we're going to do everything we can to work together as a community, to work together with our neighboring communities uh, to get through this as quick as we can. Uh, if you have questions that were not answered tonight, please feel free uh, to email us. We did set up an email specific for this virus, and I kind of forget what it is. What is it? Nick? COVID-19. COVID-19 at westorange.org? Uh, I'm sorry, coronavirus. Coronavirus, sorry. Coronavirus at westorange.org. That email will go automatically to the entire OEM team. So if you have a question that did not get answered or if a question pops up tomorrow, if anything pops up over the coming weeks that you are looking for information on, please feel free to reach out to us and someone uh, will get back to you as soon as we can. So. Uh, on behalf of all of us, we appreciate your patience. Uh, we're here to work together, to work for you, uh, and to get through this as a community. Have a great night.